Anything good? No, nothing yet. Really? Still waiting. How would you assess the safety of play in training camp so far, including him? Um, good. Uh, I mean, we're you know pleased with uh, you know Jalen Elliott has, has done a really nice job of um, you know developing his game. Uh, Nick Coleman. Um, Again, consistency and tackling. You know, Jalen was, um, you know, a young player for us last year as a freshman that is, um, you know, obviously getting much more work, more consistency in, in uh, Coach Elko's system. Devin's improving every day. Um, you know, Isaiah, you know, mid year transfer, a uh, mid year enrollee coming in and you know, just learning and uh, getting a lot more comfortable being out there. So, um, you know, we got to tackle. You know, that's key key for us. Get get the football down on the ground and um, you know communicate effectively. And and uh, you know, I think those kids have done a really nice job um, each and every day. I think there's there's um, a lot more confidence growing in in that unit. Yeah. Yeah. I, I wish I could look in the NCAA crystal ball and, and, and give you an indication. I think they're well aware of Alohi's situation relative to, you know, wanting to play in the opener. Um, you know, I think our guys have done a great job. Jill Bodensteiner has kind of led this and, um, you know, we, we just, we're going every day and just, uh, you know, spending much more time with, with the guys that are ready to play and, and eligible to play more so than, than, than him. Is there a chance the decision comes after the start of the season? I wouldn't rule it out. Um, I wouldn't rule it out. I, I don't think it's out of the, the, the realm. So, you know, Alohi's really smart. He knows our defense. Um, so, you know, he's in great physical condition. Um, if we were told Saturday morning before Temple, uh, he'd be ready to play. Can you uh, provide some clarity on Kevin Stepperson's situation? Yeah, I, I think, I think the, the, the clearest picture that I can give you is, is kind of the consistent message that I've been giving everyone is that we're not – we're not going to put you uh, in a competitive situation or on the field um, based on your talent. You've got to exhibit the traits um, that, that we're developing in our players. And, and those traits are coming along. He's making progress. But his attention to detail, uh, his focus, um, you know, all of, all of the traits that we require all of our players to have, um, he's working on and he's getting better. When he exhibits all those traits, he'll find himself on the field. So he's eligible to play? All of our players are, are eligible to play under those circumstances. And uh, health-wise, injury-wise, who will not be ready for Temple? Uh, I mean, I think right now all hands should be on deck. I, I don't know that we have anybody um, that I would say is is out of the Temple game. What about Elijah Maddie? Elijah Taylor? Elijah Taylor will not be available for the for the Temple game. Yes, thank you. I stand correct. What's that? Mack in the scrimmage Sunday. He was okay. He yeah, yeah. Play. Yeah, uh, Alizé Mack is good to go. Um, you know, we're just protecting him and, you know, he's, he doesn't, you know, I think with some, some players when, you know, when they get an injury, you, you want to make sure that you bring them along slowly. And, you know, some of our readings on, and, and maybe you don't really care about this, but it gives a little insight into why we've been cautious with him. His player load and GPS numbers are off the chart. He's very fidgety, he's high strung, and 
so his GPS numbers top out at some of the highest numbers we've ever seen. So a walkthrough for him is like a full sweat. <laughs> so we really have to pace him down. And so we treat him, quite frankly, a little bit different than everybody else. What kind of uh, weapon can he be once you guys get him to that point where he needs to be after? Well, he's a guy that can play, you know, detached for us in, in many multiple sets. So w when we use him, uh, we can be in two tight end sets so we can have one tight end attached, you know, Durham, Nick, um, Cole, Brock could be attached and he could be detached. So you could have two tight ends on the field. One of them could be a detached you know, in a receiver set like an Alizé, um, and, and, you know, that becomes a very difficult formation to match up to. You can't nickel that out. If you do, you know, um, good luck in terms of how you fit that with your run fits. So he, he presents a lot of matchup problems, as does Nick, you know, as does Cole. And, you know, those guys are, are, are a handful. What are some of those big strides that you've seen him make just throughout this offseason to get back out on the field? Well, I think a lot of them have been, you know, uh, you know, the, the traits that I've talked about. I think I love his laser focus. You know, he's really focused on um, Notre Dame, his schooling, um, and, and football. I mean, he's been a really focused young man, and, and I'm really proud of the way he's handled himself in, in the year which he didn't play. So he's, uh, as you know, it's been tick-tock for him. He's been waiting for this opportunity, and um, we're, we're excited for him. And, and he, he's, he's excited, you know, to, to get back on the field. For you guys as a team, uh, now just a little over a week away now, can you see it sort of on the field, how anxious these guys are ready to get out there? Yeah, we're, you know, we've had to have a couple of conversations about, you know, maintaining that focus. <laughs> you know, they want to. They want to get out there and play somebody. 20, 20 practices against each other. Um, this, in my experience, is that, that period of time where you have to have a stern talking to the boys about playing nice together. Um, you know, so uh, our kids want to, want to hit somebody else. Yeah. What's it been like through fall camp, kind of just watching Chip take over the offense? Um, you know, uh, it's... It's required me to, to really um, spend time on um, how we do things, you know, uh, get him comfortable and acclimated to scheduling, how I schedule things, how we put the body of practice together, um, you know, keeping him informed in terms of uh, personnel and, and how, how we want to use our personnel. So really just informative more than anything else, making sure that he has all the resources necessary. Um, but really just, you know, being in a mentor, you know, uh, role for him um, and, and uh, giving him as much uh, opportunity to um, spend time, um, you know, with me on whatever he needs. Uh, and and it's, it's um, I, I think it's, you know, for me, uh, a bit of a new role, but one that um, one that I, I feel real comfortable with. You said mentor like, but what what is your relationship like? Like when you see something in practice that maybe you want changed or a suggestion, how do you go about expressing that to him? Um, well, there's there's time and place for everything. It's you know, I don't. I'm sure your editor doesn't come to you and and you know. Uh, talk about everything in, in in the public. You know, there's times that. Things are changed um, right there. Sometimes there, you sit down and talk. Um, so there, there's different scenarios. I, I think we have a very good relationship. We're on the same page. We know what we want to do and how we want the offense to run. And he has a pretty good understanding. We've kind of vetted that out in January, February, March, April, May, June, July, and then we got to August. So we had about five or six months to sit down and talk philosophically. It's really been much more about um, you know, how we utilize some of the guys that he really wasn't aware of, maybe their, uh, some of their traits, and, and 
you know, keeping him informed on, on those, those fronts. And then Notre Dame, you know, Notre Dame's unique, you know, and, and giving him some of the nuances of what our Friday looks like as it relates to, you know, what he wants to do with, you know, meeting times. You know, we go to mass, we have a pep rally, you know, we go to class all day. We've got a, 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 a full day, you know, um, three hours of meetings is not going to work here, you know, so just those kinds of conversations and he's been great and so um, you know just informative and and um, um, you know football uh, is football but uh, just being a resource for him. What have you learned from maybe some new things that he's implemented that maybe you didn't know before? Well I know everything so I mean I, I don't know why would you even ask that question? I learn something new every day I mean I'm I'm a sponge. Um, I think from, um, you know, there, there's, there's always different ways to attack defenses and, and um, you know, Chip has brought, um, you know, a, a style of, of, of his own that he likes to attack. Um, and, you know, we'll use, um, you know, things that he's comfortable with. Um, and, and we'll use what we believe of our strengths of our personnel. Look, I, and I think I've, I've probably said this in my first year here, you know, we're still going to be about um, players over plays. Um, so, you know, and Chip's a pretty smart guy. Um, he's not gonna get caught up in scheme um, over the players. We're, we're gonna accentuate who we have. If we had five offensive linemen that were all true freshmen and couldn't play, um, you know, we'd have to be tricking you, you know, in terms of offensive scheme. We got five really good offensive linemen. I think, I think he knows what we're going to do with those guys. Right. Speaking of offensive linemen, yep. what are your expectations for Tommy Kramer? Mm -hmm. How do you get him ready for maybe being the guy that people are going to try to test early? In the well, season? Tommy's going to play for us. Yeah, Tommy's going to play for us. Tommy's a freshman, a redshirt freshman. I know you guys call him, what is he? He's almost graduated, right? I mean, he's, you know, senior, junior. I mean, he's only a freshman. He's, you know, he's, he's, he's a redshirt freshman. Um, I think he's doing great. I mean, he's, uh, he, he's got some things that he has to work on, but Mike McGlinchey does too, you know. Um, I'm, I'm pleased with Tom. I mean, he's got, he's got some really fine traits. He's physical. He's big. Um, you know, he's got to continue to work on, on some of his, his sets. Um, but, you know, to, to come in here as a, as a redshirt freshman and, and, and know that you're going to play right tackle for Notre Dame, man, that's pretty good. That's a strong resume right there. That means you're a good player. I mean, what we want to be able to do is, is have his great traits flash more. He's a good player, and we just need his great traits to flash a little bit more. And they're getting there. And, and so that's reps, repetitive reps, uh, and because he's got all the other things that you want. Um, and Robert's going to help us over there too, Robert Hainsey. You know, and, and um, you know, Robert, as we all know, is, is just in his, you know, second semester here. So, wow, you know, there's another freshman is just, you know, playing right tackle for Notre Dame. So both of those guys have, have really, if you really look at it, have, um, you know, really done way more than we ever could thought, you know, young guys could do for us at that position. And by saying Robert Hainsey will help, Oh no, he's not red shirt. Mm -mm. On the topic of freshmen, what has Michael Young been doing to get himself so much into the rotation of there since he did something? What do you guys want? Could we maybe lock that door next next time, Mike? Yeah. Um, Michael has um, has a uh, explosiveness uh, when he when he gets his hands on the ball that. Is, is a unique trait. Um, so, you know, we think we have some offensive um, 
plays that, that can run through him um, and that can contribute to what we're doing offensively. Um, so he'll be a piece of what we do offensively. He won't be, you know, uh, 82 snaps, uh, but he'll be a contributor to um, our production on offense because of his explosiveness. Combination of Chris James, CJ Sanders. Yes. Yeah. Uh, you know, we kind of been lost a little bit in the shuffle with the progress of what we have. Right. Chase Claypool and then right. two transfers coming. They through. haven't been lost to me. But I, I understand your point. Um, all, all of those guys have a significant role within what we're doing offensively. And, and they all will contribute um, to the production of our offense. Um, you know, you know, Equinemius is, is, is a, a great player. And, and, and again, I, I, think, I think these are all really good players that flash great traits at certain times. Um, and, and that's really the difference here. So um, all of them will get an opportunity to compete and contribute to what we're doing offensively. I don't think there's um, one guy that has said that, you know, I'm equanimous. No one has, has the pedigree or um, the year that he's had. Maybe one of these guys will emerge during the season, but we feel like they all deserve the opportunity to compete, and they all have um, a skill set that can contribute. Right. Training Julian still at safety. Is that more of a safeguard, or is it scheme specific? Um, it would be more. Uh, I, I, you know, I, I don't want to. I think put him in a position where he's looked at as um, um, a specialist, but he's, he's a pretty good athlete that if we needed him to play there in certain situations, he certainly could. But I apologize for, I apologize for being blocked on this. I mean, out in cyberspace, the word is that Kevin Stefferson is uh, suspended. Can you confirm or deny that? Um, I can neither confirm nor deny. Right. Yeah. Well, some years you've had a lot of frontline guys in your team coverage teams more than others. How is this year shaping up that way? How does maybe a fresh set of eyes in that room change your approach to that? Um, I've, given, I've given Brian Polian um, the green light to use whomever he feels is necessary on um, all of our running teams to be the best special teams in the country. So I did not want to shorthand him. Um, and, and that was really one of the first questions he asked. I, how, how are we going to go about you know, flipping this in terms of special teams? Um, because you know, I can come in here and be the best special teams coach, but if I'm, I'm going to field walk-ons on this team, we're not going to be very good. Um, so I'm going to give him the resources necessary to um, you know, to perform at the highest level. So you're going to see a lot of really um, fine players on those teams. Tangentially, hey, Ken, the recruiting coordinator switch with Mike Elston. Yeah. And, uh, what, how long have you been sort of thinking about that? What sort of got you to the point of doing it? Well, um, part of it had to do with, um, you know, m my wanting to um, – you know, spend more time with Mike Elston. You know, he'd been with me now 13 years, and, and I think that uh, getting a chance to spend some time with him as a coordinator last year, I think he's ready to be a head coach. And uh, I want to work on some of the areas that he hasn't had a chance to work on. Um, and, and so uh, providing now a chance for me to just spend some more time with him in other areas that he hasn't gotten a chance to develop in. And secondly, with Brian being in special teams, provides him so much more time to be involved in the recruiting end of things. So when, when, when I wrap my head around those two things, it just made sense that um, making this, this transition was, was the right time. How long did you know you wanted to do it? Um, I came to the realization, um, quite honestly, when Mike didn't get the job as the, um, the defensive coordinator. 
um, but it wasn't a priority in, in making him the assistant head coach right out of the gates. Um, but I had something else in mind for him on this staff, and, and that was, in, in, in my own way, that, that was something that I had in mind all along.